All right, so we're recording now. I'm going to turn on my video. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining me today. Um, most of you who know me know that I'm pretty passionate about special districts talking themselves up. And um, I, I'm really excited about this topic. It's one of my favorites. I have a journalism background. And so, you know, storytelling and writing compelling stories has always been something that interests me. But when it comes to special districts, you all know how much I love you. And you often are not good at talking about yourselves um, and the amazing things that you do. So this is a fun topic. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the series here in a minute. Um, I guess next I could first go to um, kind of the why this topic and this company, like why from Streamline do we do these kinds of webinars? Because our webinars are always free. And most of them are, um, you know, just educational, trying to really get the word out and get you all really um, letting the world know how amazing you are. So um, we are a company. We are not a nonprofit. We are not um, a special district. Obviously, we're not local government. But we're the only company in the entire world that builds only for special districts. We don't, we don't build tools for anyone else. We actually have a couple laugh codes using our web platform and stuff like that. But really, we collaborate with our districts so we learn what we need to build and then we build it. So it's kind of fun um, to be, it's going to keep us as a pretty small company, but right now we have over 500 customers using our paid tools, another 500 or more using our free tools. So um, we just feel like it's got to be a partnership. You know, we need to have a partnership between business and nonprofits and local government because at the local level, we've really got to work together to um, really strengthen our democracy. So that's that. So now, why me? So you got the streamlined story, but why me? And I'm sure many of you have heard me talk about my background in firefighting. I loved it so much. Never would have retired if I could have helped it. Um, but I thought I would start with a story since this is about storytelling. When I was a little kid, my dad, Mike, right there, um, was a firefighter, still is a firefighter. In fact, he just got back night before last from the Creek Fire. They were up there for two weeks. He's getting a little old to be doing this work, so we, we had some words, but I just love that he's so dedicated. He's been doing this for decades. And I remember as a small child being in bed and hearing his pager go off in the middle of the night. Beep, 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 right? Because when you're a volunteer, who knows? You're never on shift. You're just always there if you're available. And so this pager would go off. And of course, my heart would start racing. And I'd hear dad get out the door and race out the driveway. And you know, then I have these memories of him coming back and the smell of the smoke on his clothes and his face being dirty and just really, I mean, he was my hero. He still is in so many ways. And so for me, that was my first taste of special districts. And then being from a small town, I also have the ability to work with our sanitary district and our cemetery district and our veterans district. We have like four dis special districts in McCallum Hill where the fire station is named after my dad. So, so that's kind of my backstory. My dad was also involved in county government as a supervisor and I ran his campaigns and ran his office. I love local government, but I really, my heart is with special districts. So that's why we're doing this together today. And um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we're gonna to cover today, then we're gonna cover it. And then at the end, I'll talk about what we're gonna do in future sessions. It should be kind of fun. So really encourage you, I, I am doing this on my own, but I have the Q&A panel open and the chat panel open and I do not mind being interrupted. The only thing I ask is don't do the raise your hand just cause I can't really watch that many panels. So here's what we're gonna cover week one. Storytelling is very different from just writing. And when I say just writing, I'm thinking things like press releases, factual releases, um, even, even things like newsletters where you're like, here's what's happening, that's great. But, but storytelling is a very specific form of writing. So that's, that's what we're gonna talk about. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the why, which hopefully won't bore some of you. I know that you, um, many of you, I see your names in here and I've known many of you for a long time. So, you always hear me beat the same drum. Um, so I'm going to do that, that same thing again today, but it's going to be really short. These are designed to be 20 to 30 minutes every week, little bite-sized pieces, and then we'll be providing resources and all kinds of stuff along the way. Okay, so now to get into this. 
storytelling really is different than just writing. And of course, it's a form of writing. So in this section, I'm using images in place of a lot of words. But I'm like really wondering, like, what does this image say to you? Um, to me, this is the story of growth and um, possibly industry. I mean, it looks like commercial growth. Um, and so, you know, it, it's a story. It's, it's kind of an impersonal story to me. Um, it reminds me a lot of a press release. It's like, there's this many things going up and there are this many units. So it's kind of, you know, not bad. But then this gets just a little more interesting. Suddenly we've brought some people into the story. And so the story might be a little more about jobs, right? So that last slide, if I look at the last slide, if I'm anti-growth, this is probably not a good story for me. You know, I'm not going to take this so well and be like, ah, oh, see, they're just growing again. But if I'm pro jobs, if I've got a teenager who's growing up, doesn't know what he wants to do, if I've got um, a 20 year old who's looking for a job, not that I do, he's actually 23. But you know, there's, there's a little more to the story here, right? A little more interest, a little more like people being brave, look how hard they're working. Maybe they're rebuilding after a storm or whatever, right? But then now we have this story. So even if I'm anti-growth and, and my story is about building apartments and stuff, I can get on board with a family getting their first apartment, getting buying their first townhouse or what have you. Like that's a whole different, right? There are people like just looking at the smiles and suddenly you're kind of drawn in to the story a little bit more. So that's just a brief introduction. And I want to say, I mean, a story really does take them on a journey and they need to see themselves as part of the story, especially when it comes to special districts. Really, we want you to connect your readers to your district through the storytelling. So we're going to talk about methods of doing that. There's, there's so much content to this series. It's, it's going to be really fun. And it is above all personal. So you typically, if you think about the last great book you read, um, it's almost always good characters, right? I mean, the plot needs to be good and all the other things. But at least for me, when I really get invested in a story, it's when I can really, really um, see myself in the characters or, you know, see characters that I wish I could be like or things like that. And just a reminder, I do see it looks like we've got a hand up. I'm, I just am kind of glancing at the, that pane, but I do have Q&A and chat open. So feel free to use those too if you have anything to say. So here's an idea of a way it's personal. So, you know, a flood control district or, you know, the levees around here, of course, we know how important that is. Um, so how flooding can affect a neighborhood with a focus on an employee, like one specific employee who's helping mitigate or a family that lives along the levee or, you know, somebody who's lived through flooding in the past and is like, this is why this matters so much, right? How CSDs help communities thrive and children grow up strong, you know? There's so many important, important things that are provided by CSDs. I mean, they are really the Swiss army knife of special districts here in California. Um, how recreation and park districts give those children a place to enjoy the outdoors and to get out and play, especially an important story right now, of course. And, you know, the story of water and sanitation districts and how they provide essential services and protect the environment you know, I'll never forget years ago when I was doing a discovery conversation with a sanitary district uh, many, many years ago and getting them to tell me in their own words what their mission was, what their noble cause was, who they were for the world. And so we went around the table and it, you, I don't know, I, at the time I remember thinking how inspiring can a sanitary district be? And of course, these people who their hearts and souls are invested in the services they provide I just walked away just completely blown away. You know, there are people, people that answer the phones talking about how they are stewards of the environment and how they're taking care of their customers. And if customers have to call them, by the time they've called them, they're so stressed that they really need to have good people skills and all this great stuff. And we get to the general manager and she reads her mission statement and it says, we keep the poop in the pipes. And it made everybody laugh. And yet at the same time, it was the best illustration of not really telling the most inspiring story that you can tell about what your district is up to. So 
we want to we want to go a little beyond that or at least have some more tools in our toolkit to be able to tell the real story of who you are for the world um, i love this quote uh, this is a great book i'm going to have some books that i'm going to suggest you might look at if you are a reader who likes to learn more about this um, storytelling moves us into the place where we trust what we know even if it can't be measured packaged or validated empirically so it's really true. It's, it's something about a connection. I mean, we've all talked to people who like logic doesn't do anything to convince them of something, whether it's a rate increase or anything else. So storytelling can really serve us well. So into the why bother telling your story, this for some of you is going to be a little repetitive, but most of you have probably seen this. Um, I'm just going to show a very short, short clip. This is the 2016 John Oliver video about special districts. Special districts are so ubiquitous and sometimes have so little accountability, states may not even know how many they have or how much they spend. A few years back, Idaho launched an investigation of special districts with objective one being identify how many special districts <laughs> there are in Idaho. And when Kentucky investigated, its auditor found that 40% of its districts that were required to didn't even file proper budgets. I mean, this is, this is an extraordinary mess. As one of my good friends says, you can't make this up. So part of the reason I like to show that is one of the things they show in that video, and, and I have had one district, uh, one person, a board member at a district get angry at me for showing the video with the assumption that I agreed with what John Oliver was saying, and I absolutely don't, as any of you who know me know. However, I think it's very important to know that there are people who see special districts that way, if they even know who you are. And some of the things in that video that he talks about are truly crazy. Like there are municipal districts that will form just to be able to raise taxes, to build out property, and what they do is they move two people onto the property. And this is a service, a company that provides this as a service, brings in a trailer, two people live in the trailer, they become the only residents of the property. And so they're the only ones who vote on the bond issue that's going to affect everyone in the county. You know, So it's just like, there's kind of some mind blowing stuff and, and all the good things aren't getting marketed because we're not good at talking about ourselves, right? We're not good at shameless self-promotion as my friend Brandon says. So this is another reason why you want to be telling your story. You know, this is um, a man who's very angry at Orangevale Recreation and Park District, has been for a long time, disrupts meetings, all sorts of things like that, but then of course gets on, on Facebook and has all the time in the world to just bash them over and over. Anytime anything shows up that looks like any kind of government corruption, obviously LA School doesn't have anything to do with Orangevale Rec and Park, but this guy just keeps reposting it, you know, and reposting this and reposting it over and over again. So, you know, the more you're able to tell your story, the more people will at least have a balanced view rather than this being the only thing they're exposed to, right? Which is pretty awful. And I also want to say like right now, of course, to make a connection to people during a time of social distancing, like I know so many of our districts and so many even that aren't our districts that I talk to are doing amazing things out in the community and to transfer that to some sort of online word-based webinar-based um you know i mean ask me i'm recording something for the board secretary conference today and i'm so bummed because i don't want to record it i want to do it live you know so it, like, it's even more important right now more than ever to really get good at telling your story i don't remember the numbers but csda did a survey years ago and in like, there are so many people who don't even know that you exist. They think that all of their services come from the city or the county. And typically the way they find out you exist, if you aren't doing a good job of telling your story, as a special district, as a thing, like they might know that you exist because they go to your parks or what have you. But when they find out you're a special district, that's often through finding out they're paying taxes to you. And of course, that's not the best time to tell somebody who you are. <laughs> Thanks for the money. Oh, you didn't know that we're a special district. The other thing that I think is super important right now is that I don't think people realize that almost every single special district was formed by the citizens in that district, you know, by voting for these services that they weren't getting from the county or the city or whatever other local government was providing. So that's a message that many of them never hear, even once they find out special districts are a thing. 
So I feel like we're all in this together. And I think the more that we can do this well, the more we're gonna strengthen all special districts. So again, if you don't tell your story, who will? So I actually saw something like this in my hometown up in Calvers County, my water provider really needed, it wasn't a bond, it was a 218 rate increase, really needed to increase rates. They hadn't done it in so many years and they hadn't talked about it in so many years and they've got infrastructure issues and they just had to do it. But they didn't do any storytelling ahead of time. So by the time it came to even talking to the public, the public was like, oh, hell no, right? So then they're just stuck. They can't, they have to fix their infrastructure, right? So they had to back up, slow down and start doing some storytelling and start doing some marketing, right? Which many districts don't think apply to them. Like marketing is a business thing. Absolute BS. Sorry for the language, but it's really not true. You need to be able to do this. So you don't want people who think you should be consolidated. This happened with my fire district. A lot of fire districts were consolidating up there and our ISO rating was better than, than all of them. And we were like, no, you, we're not gonna consolidate because services will go down. It doesn't make any sense. But we had to be able to tell those stories to protect our district. So we're almost at the end of today's. It's super brief because we're just doing an introduction. Um, but you really are the superheroes of local government. And so I, I'm so happy that you've all joined me here today. I want to talk a little bit about what's coming up. So next week is going to be fun. This is to me is one of the most fun parts. I'm talking about your noble cause. You know, again, is it just keeping the poop in the pipes or is it maybe something a little bit bigger? So we'll talk about that next week. Week three, we're going to be looking at some contrasts in writing. So we're going to be looking at like, well, a press release versus a story. How could you tell a story a couple of different ways? So that, that topic's really fun too. And then four through six, we're going to get back to the guerrilla marketing webinar stuff that we were doing earlier in the year, pre-COVID, when we had to stop and start teaching people how to do Zoom webinars for meetings. So we're going to get back to that and get back to this, like some inexpensive, easy to do with little staff, um, different things you can do to get the word out. And that'll be the last three weeks of the series. It's all going to be super fun, um, I hope. I mean, I know it's not so much fun just having anybody talk at you over Zoom anymore. Um, I considered making this a meeting instead of a webinar, which would definitely be more fun for me, but it's a little harder to manage. So anyway, here you are with me on another webinar. Um, the last thing that I will leave you with is our website. If you haven't been there is a great, it doesn't matter if you're a customer, it doesn't matter if you ever think you're gonna be a customer. This is a great resource for lots of resources, um, a resource for, it's a resource of resources. Um, so this is where you came to, to sign up for the webinar, but we also have another disaster planning webinar coming in November, where we'll be doing business continuity planning. And then I also wanted to say that we have an accessibility center that talks about website accessibility over here, and all of our remote meeting resources are up here from all of that training we did a couple of months ago. So it's a great spot to go um, if you haven't been there poking around. And I just lastly, I know you're busy and I know life is crazy right now. And um, I just really appreciate that you would spend this time with me. Uh, really appreciate everything that you're doing. Um, oh, Diane, hi. Uh, sorry, it's not on topic, but can you give me an ATA for Engage to be available? We just bought into it. We were trying to schedule with Chris for this Wednesday to go over it. Yeah, it's, it's available now. So it's just a matter of getting you connected. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, Engage is our brand new tool that allows you to take any content on your website or on your intranet and send it out to lists. Like It's like an email campaign tool like MailChimp or um, Constant Contact. So yeah, Wednesday then it sounds like you'll be using it. And it's no problem, it's off topic. Any other questions, please just throw them in. Um, Dami, you're so, so welcome. Oh, thank you. It's always so awkward. I love being in front of people, but not like this. And that's super, super comfortable on camera. So I really appreciate it. I appreciate everyone joining. So thank you so much. And if you have any questions, I'll stick around for a few minutes. Um, and you're so welcome, Jackie, Nina, Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. Um, all of you, thank you so much. And uh, I really look forward to the upcoming weeks too. This is going to be fun. They'll be probably a little closer to 30 minutes after this, but We'll keep it nice and short. And Diane, you're so welcome. I'm glad you like your site. Christine, you're welcome. Roxana, Karen, Barbara. Gosh, okay, thanks everybody. 
Um, Ronnie, I work with the girl in CSD. Nice. Um, okay, uh, you, you're interested about Engage. Yeah, Engage is really awesome. So I will send you, I will send you information. I'll have Maria reach out, Ronnie. Thanks. You're welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, fantastic. And I'm just going to watch for questions for a minute. Um, oh, and I picked some flowers for you. I've been trying to keep flowers on the screen since it's nothing but screens lately. Oh, and that's a picture of my son when he was little, but he's not little anymore. <laughs> yes, I do hope to see you at a board set conference, Alicia. Gosh, please, could we just have this over? <laughs> So over 2020. Um, oh yeah, the slides. So the slides in the recording, um, I'm gonna make a little landing page like I always do. Every week slides and recording will be accessible from that. Um, it'll probably be, I don't know, like later today because I have to wait for the recording to convert. But yes, the slides will be available and we'll send you an email with a link and you can share them with anyone too. Oh, Ronnie, you're from Sonora. Oh yeah. Yeah, Sonora was the big, big city for us when I was a kid. Oh, Linda, you're welcome. Oh, hey, there's Linda, Linda. Hey, Linda. <laughs> All right, everybody, we'll take care and I'll see you next week. I'll send you a follow-up email. Bye.